Yes. Uh, the focus does not change. Right. Uh, we are not uh, there uh, to be served. We are there to serve the people. And right. this has been uh, my passion for quite a while. Is Fiji first the two-man leadership party? <laughs> Despite uh, being accused of this uh, two-led uh, government, two-people-led government, right. we, we are a team. Yes. Uh, we are strong, we are cohesive, we are united. Oh, your leadership style is very different to Mr. Bani Marama and Mr. Syed Kayum. So any, any thoughts on that? I always uh, prefer to keep it simple. I believe in leadership amongst the people and not over the people or above the people. The willingness to listen. Yes. Willingness to serve. Yes. And uh, willingness to learn. Right. Be corrected. Yes and uh, carry on with the focus and get on with the job. Bula, and welcome to the Lens at 177. It uh, gives us great pleasure to invite the uh, leader of the opposition, Inia Seruratu, to appear on this show. And uh, Mr. Seruratu, thank you for accepting Nak. our invitation. Nak, Felix. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to start off this show with uh, the Times Tabot Poll. We just had the Times Tabot Poll and uh, where more than a thousand people were polled across the country randomly. And you received 44% rating. 44% of the people gave you a big thumbs up as the opposition leader. And that's a very significant number. So I just want to ask you, what does that mean to you personally and as the opposition leader? Thank you, Felix. Uh, first, let me thank you for this opportunity uh, to uh, appear in your program. Uh, be assured, I've been looking forward to this. Thank you. So, <clears throat> I wish to thank you once again. Uh, I was caught by surprise yes. uh, when the tabled results, uh, uh, poll results, uh, was publicised. Uh, I received a few calls as well. Yes. Uh, surprised for a few reasons. One, uh, I did state that. Uh, uh, for me, this was unexpected yes. uh, to be uh, in such a position, uh, given what has occurred uh, lately in Parliament. Right. Uh, we have uh, lost our party leader yes. uh, because of uh, privileges issues right. uh, in Parliament. Uh, and of course, uh, he cannot continue uh, with the role of uh, opposition leader. And he, yes. in his wisdom, uh, decided to resign so that uh, someone else within the caucus can be appointed and I'm thankful yeah. uh, to the party leadership and of course to the caucus for having the confidence in me. Again, yes. I was surprised. Yes. Uh, but then uh, somebody has to take responsibility and yes. that responsibility is upon me. Yes. Uh, at the same time, uh, I do not question the, <coughs> the result, right. uh, the methodology used. Right. Uh, but for me, I'm always very positive. I accepted uh, mm -hmm. the result yes. and I'm thankful uh, for it as well. Yes. Uh, but for me, uh, I have stated to a few that interviewed me, yes. uh, the focus does not change. Right. Uh, we are not uh, there uh, to be served. We are there to serve the people and right. this has been uh, my passion for uh, quite a while, yes. and this is one of the reasons why I have decided to leave the military career right. and continue in the civil service. I did not know that I was going to end up in politics, right. just to continue to serve every Fijian, all the people of uh, Fiji. Right. Uh, again, I've been around for a while as well, yes. uh, in terms of my service to the country yes. uh, as a military officer, into the Ministry of Rural Development as Commissioner Northern, <coughs> then as Permanent Secretary, right. then into ministerial positions, mm -hmm. agriculture, fisheries, forestry, right. rural development, mm -hmm. uh, disaster management, meteorological services, uh, defense, national security and policing, right. likewise foreign affairs. So mm -hmm. I've uh, been through a few. Uh, but learning is a never-ending process. That's true. Continue to learn, <laughs> but the focus is serving the people. And that, be assured, will remain as the focus. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to move to something uh, that a lot of people are discussing on social media. Um, in 2014, you had landslide victory. Fiji first had 32 out of 50 seats. In 2018, you just scraped through 50.02%, and we all know what happened in uh, this election. So, you know, given the trend was already declining, uh, what do you think went wrong? in terms of Fiji First? Why, why did they lo uh, lose that uh, popularity? Thank you, Felix. Uh, 
everybody does uh, this probably you know after every election uh, we do our postmortem we do our analysis right. and then try to rebound better uh, rebound uh, better right. and uh, remain uh, competitive and relevant right. uh, within the, the the political climate here in Fiji yes. we have done that as well we have noted some right. of our, our weaknesses in this as well right. uh, for us uh, again uh, the uh, matter of policy yes. you know this is one of the key learnings from uh, the previous uh, previous uh, elections right. we were told mm -hmm. that uh, in our meetings our campaigns our visitations uh, we focused more on our past achievements right. rather than Right. Uh, what else can we offer if right. we come into mm -hmm. government uh, should the people decide so that is a, a big learning for us you know yes. we always uh, perhaps rested on past achievements yes. uh, and uh, probably lesser focus mm -hmm. on what else would we bring what else will be new right. uh, when we're given the next uh, opportunity in government Hmm. Processes within, yes. you know, early identification of uh, of candidates right. so that uh, they can uh, uh, meet uh, the stakeholders, right. uh, get connected, mm -hmm. listen to the issues, come up with their own uh, plans as well in the electorates. This is something that we uh, need to do better. Right. Uh, let's not also take away the fact that uh, you know uh, it's interesting right. uh, politics we have our own uh, uh, agenda against yes. each other right. uh, you know it's always good to to stand on the high moral ground yes. uh, you would uh, know for a fact that uh, uh, perhaps this is one of the areas that uh, affected us in most, uh, you know, the, the, the propaganda against you. You know, we've right. been in government for, for quite a while. Yes. And of course, uh, that's something that we anticipated. Right. But it's always good to stand on the high moral ground, you know. Uh, the, uh, whatever is said during campaigns, yes. uh, it will come around again. Uh, so uh, this is perhaps one of the reasons why we uh, lost uh, in some areas as well. But yeah. always on the positive, yes. uh, we'll always uh, learn mm -hmm. and uh, again come back better and stronger uh, in the next one. Okay, okay. Uh, when they were in opposition, NFP and uh, Sodelpa often referred to Fiji First as a two-man leadership. Party. You know, it, you'll hear it uh, even today. It still continues today. So, you know, is Fiji first the two-man leadership party? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, now they are in government, uh, <laughs> the NFP and uh, and uh, Sodalpa. Mm -hmm. uh, I have stated this from the very beginning. I hope that they learn quickly yes. and adapt as well. Uh, it's always easy to be in the opposition, uh, uh, Felix. Mm -hmm. But I always say this, and this is the message that I'm giving to my caucus. Yes. Always speak responsibly. Right. Words will haunt you. Right. So ensure that when you speak in parliament, yeah. uh, always talk facts. Right. Uh, always speak the truth. Right. You know, uh, because character is what defines us. Yes. Uh, yeah. We have uh, always been uh, accused of uh, uh, being led, uh, being uh, 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 too to people led government or whatever right. it is. Yeah. You know, uh, Felix, when you come into government, when you are uh, uh, selected as a cabinet minister, right. you once you get sworn in, you are given your, your responsibility over your portfolios. Right. And that comes with the acts and, uh, you know, uh, leadership has its own style. Right. That's a fact of leadership. Yes. I have my own leadership style. Right. You have your own leadership style. Right. Uh, for us, uh, we just need to adjust within that uh, that environment. Yes. So, 
despite uh, being accused of this uh, two led uh, government two people led government right. we we are a team yes uh, we are strong we are cohesive we are united and that uh, remains right. uh, despite all this uh, so now okay uh, we have the <laughs> now so probably only one or two are dominating from the other side as well you know <laughs> so what is the but that is the fact yes. you, are, you are given your ministerial res responsibilities right. uh, after swearing in yeah. The acts and everything that comes with it, but in the end, you have to accept what uh, the authority that comes from the leadership, because you are part yes. of that institution. That's right. And of course, uh, you have to respect uh, that. As, uh, being in leadership is not easy. Yes. So, but I did say. Uh, we were also uh, told to be the silent uh, 25, <laughs> but that silent 25 has enough firepower and ammunition <laughs> and experience <laughs> to keep the government at check. Okay. And we will do that to the best of our ability. Thank you, Mr. Seratu. We'll be right back. Interesting discussion with Mr. Seratu, leader of the opposition. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to The Lens at 177 and uh, we're really having a great discussion about uh, politics and uh, leadership with uh, leader of the opposition, Mr. Inia Seruratu. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion on social media uh, and positive discussion uh, about how your leadership style is very different to uh, Mr. Bani Marama and Mr. Syed Kayum, very different. And, uh, you know, one example was uh, the unanimous vote on uh, or the bipartisanship uh, spirit you displayed when you voted in the Interpretation Amendment Act, you know, that required women to change their names. That's just one example. But I think it's your whole approach and your personality uh, and the way that you interact with the government. So any, any thoughts on that? Thank you, Felix. Uh, again, as I've stated, leadership is not easy. Right. Uh, but uh, there are principles to guide us. There are mentors as well that we can refer right. to. Uh, but uh, in the end, uh, you, you will define your own, uh, your own legacy. Yes. Uh, in leadership, and uh, we also have our own leadership styles. Yes. Uh, for me, I am in a I am not Siti uh, Beni or Biman Prasad or Ratu Borenka Mbaini Marama. I am myself, you know. Mm. I and I always uh, prefer to to remain as such. Right. Uh, of course, there are times where. Uh, the thoughts and uh, <coughs> perhaps uh, guidance and decisions by others may influence us. Right. But I always prefer to make the decisions on my own and of course uh, be subject to those decisions as well and be ready yes. to take responsibility over it. I, leadership for me, I always uh, prefer to keep it simple. Yes. Uh, keep it simple but uh, uh, do not deviate from principles and ethics right. and most importantly it's all about serving the people I believe in leadership amongst the people and not over the people or above the people right. uh, there is a challenge in that the willingness to listen yes willingness to serve yes and uh, willingness to learn right. be corrected yes. and uh, carry on with the focus and get on with the job right. uh, that has always been uh, but uh, coming back to the issue about uh, 
the issue in Parliament over the amendment to the bill, uh, right. we stood on a matter of principle, Felix, and right. uh, I need to clarify this, right. uh, simply because understanding Order 61 <coughs> uh, matters that are before the courts. Right. Uh, this is one of the issues that was before the courts as well. Right. Uh, same thing when Act 22, right. uh, or some people prefer to call it as Bill 17, mm -hmm. right. came into Parliament, it was before the courts as well, and we right. decided not to vote. Right. Uh, unfortunately, the Honourable Speaker did not uh, uh, perhaps uh, hear us right. when we uh, raised our our voice in Parliament, right. uh, and that led to the decision uh, that he took uh, when it was gaveled. Right. But we were also standing on a matter of principle yes. because yes. Uh, it was before the courts, yes. eight of our ladies, uh, uh, citizens, uh, they took the matter to court and uh, we, we were awaiting that decision as well. But uh, we respect uh, uh, the decisions that uh, has been taken by Parliament right. and all that we need to do now is move on with it and see uh, how we can right. uh, continue to uh, implement uh, things that have been uh, approved right. uh, in Parliament. Um, the latest opinion poll had uh, People's Alliance as the preferred party that people would vote for. But Fiji first came in second. You know, uh, the party is very much still relevant. And that, uh, sir, a lot of people would say is under your leadership and also because of your leadership uh, style. You know, so if there's an election tomorrow, Fiji First is right up there. So does that give you a bit of uh, encouragement or a boost? Uh, thank you, Felix. Uh, again, uh, I respect mm. uh, the the results uh, out of the polls. Right. Uh, as I've stated, it helps us to to interpret right. uh, how other people think of us. Yes. And uh, it also helps us in terms of strategizing right. uh, and addressing uh, issues uh, that uh, do confront us. Yes. Uh, we know that uh, we have a government in place dominated by the People's uh, Alliance Party. Yes. And we have the other two coalition partners. But the fact remains that uh, Fiji First is still the single largest political party on right. its own right. uh, in Parliament. Yes. And uh, for us, we don't take that lightly. Right. We have a huge responsibility. There are expectations yes. by the people who voted for us, not only those that voted for us, right. but we are there to serve every Fijian as we had mm. uh, been doing uh, over the years, there, particularly during our two terms yes. uh, as uh, an elected government. Right. At the same time, uh, we uh, fully understand the fact uh, that um, uh, leadership has changed yes. uh, and the challenge for us is making sure that the confidence of the people in us uh, is not uh, affected. Right. We have to deliver for them yes. and uh, that is uh, something that we are focusing uh, on. Right. Our performance in Parliament is yes. very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, policies and options that we can offer uh, right. to the government uh, given our responsibility and most importantly serving the people. Right. Right. Uh, those are the key focus that yes. uh, we will maintain, regardless of where we are uh, in uh, terms of uh, uh, the running of the government. But right. again, yes. I prefer us to be seen as the government in waiting or right. the alternative government rather than the opposition. Uh, yes. Because mm -hmm. when you call yourself the opposition, right. uh, you are distracted. Yes. It limits your yes. your scope of uh, of um, vision, and uh, so I am reminding our caucus: yes. we are the government in waiting, and when we are the government in waiting. Right. Things can change overnight. Right. Uh, we have to be prepared right. uh, to be in leadership uh, if it's so required. Therefore, how we speak, how we present ourselves, yes. don't see yourself this, the opposition, opposing for the sake of opposing. Right. That has been a yeah. major weakness in previous opposition parties. Yes. Come up with alternatives, come up with constructive criticisms, right. and uh, be always prepared. Yes. Uh, you know, just carrying on from what, <clears throat> what you just said, uh, to always be prepared. There's been a lot of talk and some documents have emerged on social media about the possibility of another coup. Um, 
And I think people want, would want to hear from uh, you know U.S. Uh, uh, government in waiting leader. Uh, just your thoughts on that. You know that these documents are so suddenly emerging. People are talking about it. It's a bit of fear, a bit of uncertainty. You know, just just your thoughts on that. Thank you, Felix. Uh, <laughs> It's that fear and uncertainty that we, uh, we uh, need to address, we need to get rid of it. Uh, I came to know about that document through the media. Right. Uh, when I was given a copy yes. uh, by one of your colleagues, uh, in fact from uh, uh, Vijay Narayan, yes. uh, on what's circulating in social media, uh, I took responsibility check within the caucus if uh, this has been from within, yes. uh, but uh, it was not so. Uh, but unfortunate that someone who was a candidate of Fiji First uh, was uh, linked with the document. Right. But let's respect the fact that the police are investigating it. Right. But I have uh, uh, stated it when uh, I was confronted with the question. Right. Uh, this is not good for our democracy. Yes. Uh, we've gone through a lot in the past. We have have set the platform, yes. the foundation right. uh, for our democracy uh, with the 2013 constitution, uh, likewise uh, the economic uh, opportunities, the growth. Right. Uh, we need to keep uh, keep focusing on this and right. move together as, uh, as a nation. Uh, taking responsibility and I think for us, particularly as leaders, uh, given what we have gone through in the past, this is something that we uh, should not be uh, entertaining Yes, and that has been uh, my position as well. Thank you. That's very reassuring coming from the leader of the opposition and we'll be right back after a short break to discuss more with him. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to The Lens at 177. I'm here with the leader of the opposition, but he prefers to call himself the leader of the government in waiting, uh, Inia Seruratu. Um, sir, the coalition government, six months on, how well are they doing? Or Thank you. how not so well are they doing? <laughs> it's for them to rate themselves. <laughs> I know that they have... Uh, uh, did some work on uh, their performance right. um, because uh, they made those promises. Right. Uh, they need to be accountable for the promises that they've made right. as well. As I've stated, mm -hmm. it's always easy to come up with uh, uh, your own promises when you are outside government, but yes. uh, when you are inside government that you know, yes. then you come to realize that uh, things may be otherwise yes. because there are processes and systems in place. Right. There's a, there are laws and of course existing programs yes. uh, so government uh, is learning we stated from the beginning felix yeah. that we have handed over government in good faith right we have accepted the uh, results of the 2022 elections yes although we won the elections in terms of uh, party, right. but we were not able to form government. Right. That's democracy, we have accepted that, right. we move on. Right. We have handed over. And now we have seen the performance of government in the last uh, six months. Right. Uh, we would say that uh, we uh, have provided that uh, that space and environment for them right. uh, to perform in the last six months. Officially, right. from tomorrow, right. <laughs> then probably that's when right. they really start right. because it will be their budget. Right. Although they have been in government in the last six months, yes. uh, as from uh, tomorrow, uh, we, we, start, we will right. start with the budget, the official budget yes. of the coalition government. So all that they have, they have been achieving mm -hmm. 
you know, the projects that they have been commissioning and whatever. Those were from Fiji First Days, right. and uh, including the budget as well. Uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, before election, stated that one of the first things that they will do is to have a budget review, right. a mini budget probably, but the Honorable Minister for Finance thought uh, otherwise. So right. we've been uh, running on Fiji First uh, budget for the last uh, six months. Right. Uh, so uh, we do acknowledge that they have uh, done uh, some work. Yes. And uh, they have fulfilled some of the, the promises that they have made as well. Right. Uh, but we also did some analysis on those promises, probably just about 33% of or so right. of what they promised initially yes. for them to achieve in the first 100 days was, uh, was achieved. Right. And hopefully they will yes. uh, over time uh, come back and fulfill what they have uh, promised the people. Right. As I've stated, they have made some legislative changes. Yes. They have um, in the budget uh, again uh, brought in some of uh, the promises that uh, they made earlier so government is running right. and uh, we are monitoring that uh, very very closely yeah. uh, however um, uh, Felix uh, we have also stated that uh, being in government is not only about uh, winning the elections and right. uh, mm -hmm. taking the responsibility. Uh, there's a lot that comes with it. Yes. And we have raised our concerns as well, particularly governance issues, right. uh, institutional integrity mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we have um, already raised uh, uh, with government. Right. Because, uh, as I've stated, uh, you have uh, all uh, the the privileges now, yes. uh, you know, the prerogative right. uh, to make decisions, right. but uh, you are accountable as well, right. and that is something that we keep reminding government. Right. Uh, the same laws, mm -hmm. the same constitution, the same processes and systems, that is the challenge. Right. And we have raised our concerns in some areas, uh, which uh, we have made known to them okay. in that regard. You, you use some very colorful uh, words to describe the budget. Uh, nothing new, repetition of what Fiji First has done with a bit of tweaking here and there. <laughs> and you even said this government is spending money like drunkards in a nightclub. You know, you still think, uh, even in, in, in the six months they've been there, that this is still the case? Do you stand by those words? You know, uh, don't forget that I also called it a, a microwave budget. <laughs> Re reheating the old food. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, uh, this is the what uh, the Minister for Finance, mm -hmm. uh, who was uh, once the opposition spokesman right. uh, for the economy, yes, and uh, of course he has been. That is their role right. uh, as members of the opposition. Right. Uh, but I'm just uh, quoting back to him uh, the very words that he used to. Uh, share across the floor of parliament when right. we were in government right. and we were uh, they were in the opposition the budget has been passed right. and i say that uh, it's now history right. we've argued we've debated right. we've made motions right. uh, and of course mm -hmm. in the end the government uh, stood firm yes government has made uh, its decision Mm. Uh, we looked at it very constructively, uh, Felix, yeah, yeah. be assured. We have given some of the options, perhaps the, the biggest thing that we were after in the budget, and mm. that was also raised uh, and highlighted by the Fiscal Review Committee, yes. uh, is to strike the balance between uh, the social protection, right. social assistance uh, programs, yes. uh, together with uh, the need for us, this is particularly on expenditure, eh? Yes. The, uh, the need for us to balance that with uh, activities that will stimulate growth in the economy. Right. And that's investment, mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure development, right. uh, and so forth. Yes. So that is the, the critical area that we were looking right. at. Right. Because the way we saw the budget is... Um, they have, uh, in terms of their projected revenue, right. raising that revenue is not a problem. 
and uh, for them straight into a textbook uh, solution right. let's do more taxes right. uh, when we look at it in terms of their uh, planned expenditure right. that is where a lot of uh, of uh, issues were raised right. from us. Right. They have the perfect opportunity to reduce that expenditure more. Right. But the challenge, as I've stated in the House, right. it is a coalition budget. Yes. They need to please most of their own stakeholders. Right. And that is why they have that high mm -hmm. Uh, expenditure yes as a result yeah. they will add another 600 million plus yes. into the the nominal debt yes although they have increased revenue right. and uh, right. decreased the debt to GDP ratio yes but at the same at the same time because of that high expenditure right. and particularly on operational expenses right. we don't mind more expenditure into the the capital expenditure yes but more of this is uh, on okay. operational expenses right. and of course they are adding another 600 million deficit into the budget but as i've stated budget is now history yeah. for us uh, the alternative government this is what we're doing yeah. we are taking this budget to the people it right. becomes our budget now whether right. we like it or not it yes. becomes our budget from tomorrow, we will see the effect of the budget. One, we want the people to understand the budget. Yes. You know, in terms of, that's our responsibility. Right. Let's not cover things up. Right. This is something that has yeah. always been lacking in the past. Yes. Let's talk about the, the revenues. Let's yeah. talk about the deficit. Right. Let's talk about the debt level. Yes. Uh, let's talk about how that budget is going to affect us. Mm -hmm. So one, it's the overall budget that right. we are taking to the people. Two, what are the implications? Right. Some people, you know, it affects people disproportionately. Yes, no. But then, come tomorrow, although there has been an increase in $125 to the welfare recipients and whatever, yeah. but the reality will hit people tomorrow. Right. When that, uh, that three, so that's uh, the uh, implication of the budget. Three. Yeah. What are the opportunities in the budget, you know, for the farmers, for the fishermen, for the first homeowners? Right. We want to take those to the people as well. And lastly, how do we mitigate? Right. Yeah. Okay. It's going to affect us, you know, mm. more backyard gardening for you and me. <laughs> Try to save costs yes. so that we can. Because one thing that we note that will affect us in terms of the budget is our take-home pay will be reduced. Your disposable income will be reduced. Mm. Therefore, your consumption will be reduced. Right. So this is something that we, we need to mitigate some of the costs. Right. Uh, you also mentioned that, uh, you know, the debt level will increase from 9.9 .9 billion to 10.5 billion because of, uh, as you stated quite clearly, the, uh, the spending uh, by this government. Uh, but, you know, some people will argue that uh, they are inheriting a debt left by Fiji First. You know, just your uh, just views on that, that the, in fact, the debt that uh, the country is in is as a result of Fiji First's um, failed management or mismanagement of the economy. Just your thoughts on that? Thank you. Thank you, Felix. Uh, let me correct this. Mm -hmm. This is not Fiji First debt alone. Right. This debt, mm -hmm. this um, debt stock that we have. Yes. Uh, is debt from the alliance government right this is debt from the labor government this right. is debt from the svt government right. this is debt from the sdl government mm -hmm. because whichever government comes into place right. you inherit the debt right. some people do not understand this thank you for this opportunity yeah. yes this is how the debt story in fiji has evolved over the years right. because the unfortunate thing about Fiji as a small developing country, mm -hmm. our revenue is always insufficient right. to cover our expenditure. Yes. And that results in a deficit budget. Mm -hmm. I cannot recall when was the last time a government ever had a surplus budget. 
No. Yes. Therefore, mm -hmm. whenever there is a deficit, mm -hmm. government has to borrow. Right. Alliance government borrowed. Mm -hmm. Labour government borrowed. SBT government borrowed. Mm -hmm. SDL government borrowed. Fiji First government borrowed. Right. They also borrowed another 600 or something million right. in order to offset the difference between revenue right. and uh, so it's not a Fiji First debt. Right. We have inherited this and we will continue to pass that on. Right. Uh, the debt story has always been about sustainable debt. Yes. Unfortunately, before elections, nobody ever talked about sustainable debts yeah. or the debt to GDP ratio. Right. Everybody was talking about the nominal debt yeah. value. Right, yes. The amount. Mm -hmm. There's too much debt, nine point something billion. Sasibe right. now. Right. Fiji will be sold to whatever country. Whatever country. <laughs> that was the story. Right. That is not a bad thing to do as right. long as it is manageable. Right. The Fiscal Review Committee also highlighted that. Yes. Now, after the first budget has been passed, mm -hmm. everybody deliberately, right. deliberately, right. the Minister for Finance does not want to talk about the nominal debt value, which is going to be increased by 600 million. Right. Now the focus is on the debt to GDP value. Right. They are talking now about sustainability. Yes. But to me, mm. I've stated this in the house. Yes. I'll state it again. Mm. Let's just grow the economy. Right. So that we can cushion the stocks. Yes. So that we can mm. um, offer more in terms of uh, our infrastructure and investment and right. in terms of our consumption as well. Okay. Because when the economy grows, it's better mm -hmm. for Fiji. Yes. That is one of the best solutions in order to, for us to always maintain the sustainable debt level. Mm -hmm. Let's grow the economy. And the challenge now for the government is to get us back to pre-pandemic level. Right. And then from pre-pandemic level, when once we hit there, Right. Hopefully, we will grow the economy again. We have been criticized about uh, our boom. Right. They no, you know, well, right. things happened. Yes. Uh, we have seen how people have benefited, particularly right. the middle income bracket level yes. in the country. Uh, these are the people that spend a lot. Yes. So that's something that we will uh, monitor very, very closely. Yes. Thank you for that. Uh, we'll be right back after a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Hello and welcome back to The Lens at uh, 177. We're not only having an interesting discussion, we're also learning a lot about uh, debt and how the Fiji First Government uh, grew the economy and the ability to borrow. Uh, speaking to the leader of the opposition, or like he puts it, the leader of the government in waiting, in Yasiru Ratu. Uh, so the public health system, even till today, it uh, struggles to meet the basic needs of the people, the infrastructure is crumbling. Um, Minister for Finance, uh, Professor Biman Prasad says they need 500 million just for CWM alone to uh, repair and rebuild CWM. You know, and now people are saying they inherited this, the state of that, uh, the health facilities and uh, health services from the Fiji First Government. You know, how how would you respond to that? Let me say this, Felix. One, if you look at uh, Fiji's health system, compare that to the region. And of course, uh, 
most other developing countries as well. We still have one of the best systems in Fiji. Right. Uh, this is the very system that uh, saw us through the catastrophes, mm -hmm. and of course, particularly the COVID. Right. A lot, even in the region, the world, they learned from the Fiji experience. Right. But let us break it uh, perhaps into two major components. One is the infrastructure itself. Yes. And two is the services, including, you know, the human resources, the right. uh, capacities, mm. uh, technical uh, support, uh, and of course, uh, the human capital as well. Uh, so let's break it into two, those two big components. Right. Uh, you know, for me, Felix, I've served in government. We have a lot of uh, this old infrastructure yeah. from the colonial era, which we are still using. Yes. So the question is, do we replace or do we renovate? Mm -hmm. uh, that is a challenging question. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the budget because every decisions that we take uh, will be uh, subject to uh, funding yes. uh, or otherwise mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, implement the decisions that we take. So we have a lot of this old infrastructure that we inherited, we have been inheriting over the years. Right. I came over as Minister for Defence. We still have, there has been a lot of growth mm -hmm. in the urban centres in Fiji. Right. But the police stations are the police stations from the colonial days. Yes. <coughs> in Lombasa, mm. you see it in Totong, mm. you see it in Nakasi, you see it in Otoka, you see it in Nandi, you right. see it in Walelew, mm. old infrastructure. Have we replaced some? We have. Right. But the gov next government has to pick up and continue. Right. Whether that will happen? CWM has been there for ages. Yes. There has been a new extension, thankful to our Japanese uh, our annex to the existing CWM. Yes. Thank you to the Japanese government. Right. I toured CWM with uh, the, the Honorable Prime Minister and uh, the Minister for Health during COVID. Yes. When we were looking at, uh, you know, they admitted mm -hmm. this is the medical superintendent at the hospital that they have not been able to do most of the major renovations at CWM simply right. because of the uh, occupancy rate over the years. Right. Uh, let's accept the fact that uh, we have serious uh, health problems as well. Yes. You know, when it comes to NCDs and whatever. Mm -hmm. So CWM unfortunately has always been filled to capacity right. because of what's available at CWM that is not available in the subdivisional or divisional hospitals. Right. Most of the cases have to be referred to. So let's uh, come or look at this issue with an open mind. Right. Uh, let's give some respect and, and uh, credit as well to the health officials. Right. But I do admit the fact that Mm -hmm. Some or most of these old systems, again, mm -hmm. do we replace them or do we uh, renovate or refurbish? That is the question. Right. And it comes back to allocation. Right. We inherited it. Mm -hmm. We have done some of what we can do right. and we are passing it on to. You cannot judge mm -hmm. uh, the state of CWM just from uh, a missing doorknob. Right. And this has been coming from them over the last few years. Mm -hmm. There has been some renovations right. in uh, CWM. Mm -hmm. uh, the operating theater. Yes. Uh, during the Fiji First government, uh, a lot of work was done in that. Uh, CT scan, MRIs. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't have the full list yes. of things that, that were done. In. Mm. And look at uh, within the Suva Nasino, uh, the work undertaken in Makoi in, uh, in Nine Miles, new health facilities. You go to Rotuma, Kandavu, uh, sorry, uh, Lambasa, right. Nabosa, 
that's in terms of infrastructure right. that has to continue right. but maintenance of course we admit as well that yeah. there's a lot of maintenance that needs to be done right. and uh, looking at the budget the current government coalition government yeah. they are focusing more now on maintenance right. nothing new right. no new infrastructure right. it's their call yes but then uh, we have work to do in that area on the other hand i've said that's infrastructure right. In terms of the health systems and yes. the people in Fiji, uh, I can still say that we are quite privileged mm -hmm. and fortunate that we have a very capable, professional, right. uh, highly qu qualified people mm -hmm. in our health services. We did our best right. to raise uh, the terms and conditions. Right. We are a government that did, I think, the most significant mm -hmm. in order to keep our people here. Right. A lot of them are migrating. Yes. There are greener pastures abroad. Yes. In the UAE, in Australia, in New Zealand, how do we keep them? Mm. We must create the best environment for them and terms and conditions, particularly in terms of pay, that's something that... Uh, okay. And the continuous uh, capacity development, mm -hmm. uh, that needs to... Again, uh, I would say of course, I admit the fact that there are issues. Yes. We do what we can. And of course, the next government has to continue. And mm. we expect more right. from the next government, right. from the current government. They have to do more, mm. not only in terms of maintenance, right. but we want to see them building new hospitals. <laughs> I'm from Korobo in Tailim. Right. That hospital has been there since 1975. Yes. I hope that they can do something yeah. new <laughs> to that hospital in Korbo Telem. They, they might argue that uh, you should have done that in the past uh, two terms. <laughs> we did Novosa. <laughs> uh, Deputy Prime Minister Biman also said government has to look for $2 billion to replace bridges in the next decade. And, uh, you know, $2 billion is a significant sum. So people might um, argue what happened in the last two terms in government, why, wasn't, why weren't these bridges fixed and upgraded to the level that they were supposed to. I'm just quoting what he said. Thank you for raising that question because uh, they have deliberately denied mentioning what f uh, Fiji First government did in terms of bridges alone. Right. I'll come back to the bridges. Right. There was a reason why Water Authority of Fiji was formed yes. and FRA was formed. Right. There was an audit carried out uh, on government infrastructure right. and the state of services. Mm -hmm. That led to the formation of Water Authority of Fiji right. as opposed to the Water Supplies under PWD right. and Fiji Roads Authority as opposed to the Department of National Roads, mm -hmm. again under Ministry of Works and PWD. Right. Because of the state of the infrastructure in Fiji. Again, yes. Felix, this is something that you have to accept when you come in as a government. Right. Stop blaming others, look at the problem, get the resources, right. fix it, right. do the job. Right. rather than complaining okay. and get on with it. Felix, yeah. Fiji First Government has spent over three point, more than that amount that he is quoting, yes. three point something billion or so yes. over the last few years to fix infrastructure in Fiji. Right. Let me come to the bridges. Right. I heard them yes. during a physical review committee report that they are looking at about 30 or so bridges to do. Yes. When that report that I stated, that audit report came around 2013, mm -hmm. 130 something bridges in Fiji Mm -hmm. were in the state of condemned, mm -hmm. critical, mm -hmm. or to be in the process of being replaced. Right. 130 plus bridges, right. bridges alone. Right. I'm not talking about uh, jetties and wharves and yes. other mm -hmm. roadings, whatever. This is just bridges alone. Right. Mm -hmm. Out of that 130 something bridges, mm -hmm. Fiji First mm -hmm. has already constructed 81. Right. Look at the amount, number of bridges conducted, uh, constructed over the years right. in the annual reports. 81, 81. of that 130 yeah. some bridges mm -hmm. has already been constructed. Let's go around Suba. Watuanga Bridge? Right. That was during Fiji first time. Right. Stinson Parade or whatever there near the market? Yes. That was uh, Fiji first. Uh, Tamaboyway Bridge? 
that was Fiji first. Right. Uh, if you can just add, perhaps, uh, I'll come back to the bridges. Mm. Look at what's going on now in Super Point, what's going on now in Walu Bay. Yeah. That's other infrastructure development under FRA. Yeah. Go around Bitilio. See the new bridges that mm. has already been constructed. Mm. You go towards Nandunga, you go towards uh, uh, Tabua and Rakiraki. There's one still constructed now in Kasau. Yes. There's one still constructed in uh, Wendelide in Telew. Right. Go to Bonolew. Uh, Queens, uh, sorry, the road from uh, from uh, Nambuwalu to Ndriketi. Right. The bridges along that, and you go Nangingi to Bangasau. Yes. Uh, uh, the Han 81, 81 of those bridges has been done. Right. So my message to the Minister for Finance, mm -hmm. pick up what's left, get it done. Right. There's no new bridges coming up in the next budget. Yes. They are only completing what we have already done. Right. This is why growing the economy is important, so that he can, or government can borrow more. Right. There's work that needs to be done. We have done that, that 80 something. Right. I hope I'll be interested to know how many bridges, new bridges, right. will they construct in the next four years. That's bridges alone. Right. Apart from the other. Areas. Apart from roadings and whatever. Right. Well, uh, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our show. Um, I really hope to get the opposition leader back. Um, into the lens at 177 because I don't think we've ended our conversation. So we hope to have him back soon. Uh, please do visit our website www.fizitimes.com and our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to see segments from this show and our other news items. Good